from Hollywood, the Phil Harris Alice Faye Show. For your enjoyment, here is the Phil Harris Alice Faye Show, written by Ray Singer and Dick Chevrolet, with Elliot Lewis, Walter Tetley, Robert North, Janine Roos, Anne Whitfield, Walter Sharp and his music, yours truly, Bill Foreman, and starring Alice Faye and Phil Harris. <laughs> Today, the Harris's youngest daughter, Phyllis, is celebrating her birthday. She's received a lot of presents, such as a bicycle, roller skates, a doll, and a carriage. And as we look in, she is about to open the last package, a gift from her Uncle Willie. Gee, Uncle Willie, this is beautiful. It's just what I always wanted. What is it? <laughs> you don't know what this is? No. What? Thirty yards of felt weather stripping for your bedroom windows. <laughs> <laughs> is that what it is? I thought it was two miles of dental floss. <laughs> You're lucky, sis. You should see what he gave me for my birthday. A mother goose mustache cup. <laughs> Gee, Uncle Willie, you promised to buy me that toy pony, and I wanted Now, it. now, Phyllis, you should be thankful for what you received. That's right. Now run along and play with your weather stripping. <laughs> <laughs> Go ahead, play cowboys and Indians. With weather stripping? Yeah, use it to tie Uncle Willie to a tree and I'll get you a bow and arrow set. <laughs> go ahead, kids. Go on outside and play, huh? Oh, gee, Alice. I'm going out and get Phyllis that electric pony. It's a great toy. You get on this thing and then you press a button and it, and it goes all over the place. Oh, but, Phil, it costs $75. And besides, if you bought it today, it would be broken by tomorrow No, it won't, honey I'll be careful when I ride it <laughs> <laughs> Oh, gee, honey Can't I get it for Phyllis so she won't be dis... Uh-oh, I'll get that Man, I'd love to get her that pony Kids are only young once and they... Hiya, Curly oh, hello, Frankie What's the matter with you? I feel terrible It's little Phyllis's birthday and she wants a pony why don't you get her one? Well, Alice says it's too expensive. Oh. Well, if a pony's too expensive, get her a jigger. <laughs> <laughs> She'll never know the difference. Remley, Remley. Let's break it up, huh? Now, let's don't get started, because it's no laughing matter. <laughs> Come in here, get her a jig. What can I talk? I'm in trouble. Phyllis wanted a toy electric pony for her birthday, and she didn't get it. And she's very disappointed. Oh, well, she'll get over that when she sees all this stuff I bought her. I got a lot of things for her to play with. A doll, jacks, set of blocks, bottle of ready-mixed martinis. Wait a minute. <laughs> a bottle of martinis for a kid? No, that's for me to play with. <laughs> I'm too old for dolls. Hello, Frankie. Hi, Alice. What are all those packages in your arms? Presents for Phyllis. Oh, here's a little something extra for her in this envelope. Go ahead, open it. Okay. Oh, gee. It's just what Phyllis always wanted. What is it, honey? A gift certificate for a tattoo job. <laughs> <laughs> I figured that would make a nice picturesque gift. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, the kid'll look great with a battleship on her stomach. <laughs> The big mole, maybe. <laughs> Curly, don't be ridiculous. You can't put a big battleship on a little girl's stomach. Better make it a PT boat. Oh. <laughs> Frankie, what kind of a gift is that for a little girl? A tattoo job. Yeah, I guess it is more practical for a grown woman. <laughs> <laughs> However, if you don't like that, here's something that's ideal for a child. Books. Oh, that's better. Books are wonderful. Wait a minute, Alice. Wait a minute. Now, don't go off the deep end. <laughs> what kind of books, Mr. Remley? Educational books for children. Written and published by I.J. Grogan. 
Grogan? You mean I.J. Grogan, boy counterfeiter? He was a counterfeiter, but that's all behind him. He's converted his presses so he can print kids' books. I bought the whole set. They're wonderful stories to combat juvenile delinquency, and each one teaches a moral lesson. Oh, say, that sounds good. Oh, what are the names of some of them? Well, here's one called Hansel and Gretel at Leavenworth. <laughs> Or, no matter how good you make a $3 bill, never try to pass it at a bank. <laughs> Frankie, that sounds like a great book for a child. Oh, honey, you ain't heard nothing yet. Listen to these. Heidi gets the hot seat. <laughs> Little Red Riding and her hood. <laughs> and here's one that's really a Clyde. It's called Raggedy Ann Goes to Las Vegas. <laughs> Yeah, that one teaches kids the pitfalls of gambling Yes, yes, that I can see I can see that by the titles of some of these chapters Listen to this, honey How to warm up a cold deck <laughs> How to act nonchalant when caught with five aces <laughs> Well, yeah, and here's 50 fictitious names to use in case of a raid All right <laughs> Take these things out of here and burn them up. Remley, you do the stupidest things. I don't know what's That's getting... That's a fine way to talk to me. Just for that, I got a good mind not to sing. Nobody ever asked you to sing. <laughs> Nobody ever asked you to sing either, but you do it every week. <laughs> I thought it might be a welcome change if I sang. Well, if anybody does any singing around here, it's going to be me. I don't know about that. Well, I, I know about it. I can... Now, boys, don't argue. There's only one fair way to settle this. I'll sing. Now see what you did? <laughs> it's a lovely day today So whatever you've got to do You've got a lovely day to do it in That's true And the hope whatever you've got to do Is something that can be done by two For I'd really like to stay it's a lovely day today And whatever you've got to do I'd be so happy to be doing it with you But if you've got something that must be done And it can only be done by one There is nothing more to say Except it's a lovely day for saying It's a lovely day It's a lovely day No matter if it's springtime Summer, winter, or fall It's a lovely day It's a lovely day So whatever you do So whatever you do You've got a lovely day to do it in That's true And I hope whatever you've got to do is something that can be done by two For I'd really like to say Out in the sunshine It's a lovely day It's today. a lovely day And whatever you've got to do I'd be so happy to be doing it with, with you But if you've got something that must be done And it can only be done by one There's nothing more to say Except it's a lovely day for saying It's a lovely day Oh, it's such a lovely day <laughs> Honey, that was swell Remley couldn't have done better <laughs> You know something, Alice? I've been thinking, uh if Phyllis wants that electric pony, I'm going to go out and get it for her. After all, it's only $75. Only 70 You mean you don't mind spending $75 for a toy? No. Curly, I saw a little plaything I'd like for my birthday. <laughs> yeah, what? There's a little manicurist down the street. All right. <laughs> <laughs> of course, she's not electric, but I could have her wired. <laughs> You're going to be quiet. Phyllis wants the pony and I'm going down and get it for her I want her to... Okay, okay, if you insist But don't be too long 
I want you to stop at the bake shop and pick up a cake I ordered for Phyllis. I'll see you later, honey. All right, honey. Hey, Curly? Yeah. Why spend $75 on a toy pony when you can add a few dollars to it and get a real pony? A real one, huh? Sure. Gee whiz. That's every kid's dream, isn't it? Sure. Having a real pony. Yeah, but where are we going to get one? You leave it to me. <laughs> I can take you to a place where they know all about ponies. Yeah? Let's go. Huh? All right. <laughs> Well, here we are, Curly. Here we are where? Hmm? Those aren't stables. Remley, this is an office building. There aren't any ponies here. Well, I know that, but this guy oh. is an expert on ponies, and he has his office here. Now, follow me. And now, as they come into the stretch, it's big noise by a length. <laughs> Lady Lynn coming up fast on the inside, and it's powder dry making a bit on the rail. And here they come across the wire, and it's powder dry by a nose. <laughs> Thank you. This is a bookmaking establishment. No. <laughs> so this is what they look like. <laughs> yes, and I don't want to see such goings on, so I'll close my eyes and you lead me out of here. You ought to be ashamed of yourself taking me to a place like this. I'm sorry, Curly. Well, you should be. I didn't know. I didn't. Never been here before myself, and if I had known, I would... Hey, Remley! <laughs> you speaking to me, sir? Yeah. That nag you bet on yesterday came in and paid ten to one. It did? Here's your winnings. Sixty cents. <laughs> the horse paid ten to one, and you got sixty cents? Remley, aren't you getting a little reckless? <laughs> Betting six cents on one horse? Or was it a five-horse parlay? <laughs> Don't be a wise guy. I bet it all on one horse. Across the board. <laughs> Remley, why did you bring me here? Curly, you want a pony, and these guys know all about the pony. Yes, but I can't buy a pony here. Who says you can't? <laughs> It's Grog. Yeah. Hey, Grog, what are you doing here in Sam's bookmaking establishment? Do you place your bets with Sam? Well, no, no. I just come to see my dear old mother. <laughs> you mean your mother hangs out in this bookie joint? She has to. She's Sam. <laughs> it must be nice to have a mother you can call Sam. <laughs> Look, Grog, do you know where I can buy a good pony? Well, now you have come to the right man because I just happen to have a racehorse for sale. No, mm. no, 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 Grog. I don't want no racehorse. See, I just want a, a, a little pony. Now, why waste your money on a pony when for a few bucks more you can get a thoroughbred and you can race him, you can make money? Well, that's true. Uh, Grogan, uh, uh, is this horse of yours any good? Good, he says. <laughs> good. Hey. <laughs> Look here, Clem. This nag... <laughs> this nag is the biggest moneymaker since Citation. He is? Mm -hmm. Well, how much do you want for him? Well, would uh, $28 be asking too much? <laughs> <laughs> no, no, I don't... No, that, uh, that, that don't sound too high for a horse that can make a million dollars in purses, huh? Look, Grogan, if this horse of yours is so good, then how come you're not racing him? Well, I did. Last year, I raced him. I raced him on every track of the country, and I would still be doing it, except for one thing. What? I was barred from every track in the country. <laughs> Grogan, did you do something dishonest? Now, how can you say that? <laughs> you know that I wouldn't do nothing dishonest. Now, you buy this nag, kid, and I will throw in all the equipment that I used when I raised them. Well, what kind of equipment? Syringe, no sponges, saddle with electric buzzer, you know. And if you pay cash, I will also throw in a crooked jockey. Hey, Grog. What? What colors did your horse race under? Oh, he raced under different colors. There's... One week I painted them black. <laughs> <laughs> fixed, them. 
<laughs> there was one week he was brown, and one week he was black and white. You know, and it gave him a nice sporty look for the summer meat. <laughs> Look, Grogan, I don't think I want to buy this horse. There must be something wrong with him. There's nothing wrong with him. He's the greatest piece of horse flesh you ever saw. If you don't believe me, you just take a look at this picture of him here. here. There stands the greatest handicapped horse you ever saw. <laughs> I defy you to find anything wrong with this horse. He's only got three legs. <laughs> That's his handicap. <laughs> I don't, I, I don't believe I've ever seen a racehorse with three legs no. What do you call him, Grogan? Tripod <laughs> Ah, yeah, you ought to see Tripod coming down the stretch But he only has three legs, how does he run? Like a camera <laughs> Look, uh, Mr. Grogan what? Grog, uh, I don't want to appear difficult, but I don't cotton to this animal. <laughs> you don't? Well, you think it over, Harris, because I guarantee that if you buy this horse, you will be getting the fastest thing on two legs. I know, but now he's got two legs. <laughs> well, he really has three, if you want to count the wooden one. All right. <laughs> Look, now, I don't want no racehorse. All I want is a pony for my child with four legs. You got a child with four legs? <laughs> Look, if you can have a horse with two legs, I got a right to have a child with four legs. Now, do you have a pony for sale or don't you? Well, no, I ain't got no ponies. That... Hey, yeah, wait a minute. There is a friend of mine has got a defunct circus in Cucamonga, see? And this guy, he's breaking up the outfit, he's selling all the animals, and maybe you can pick up one of his trick ponies. Oh, yeah? yeah. Well, thank you, Grog. Thanks yeah. a lot. Come on, Remley. Well, <laughs> look, Remley, we might as well forget about the pony because I haven't got time to go to Cucamonga. I gotta pick up the kid's birthday cake and get home. Well, you get the cake. I'll go out and get the pony. Would you do that? <laughs> you can trust me, Curly All right, but look, now, when you get to the circus Remember, I want a pet for the kids So don't come back with the bearded lady, huh? But, Phil, why are you getting a real pony? Where will we keep it? Well, we got a big place here We can keep it in the guest room <laughs> Phil, don't be ridiculous Besides, Mother's coming over to stay with us for a while. She'll be sleeping in the guest room. So what? It's a double bed. <laughs> I don't know. Mother's not accustomed to having four cold feet on her back. <laughs> well, don't worry, honey. We'll find, find a place for her. We'll build a stable. For who? The horse or my mother? They can toss for her. <laughs> Fair enough. I wish Frankie would get here. I'm anxious to see that pony he picked out, boy. Phil... Do you think you sent the right man? Oh, now, don't worry, honey. If there's one thing that Remley knows about its horses, he won't have any trouble picking out a good pony. Uh, come in. Hi, Curly. Well, my mission is completed. You got the pony, huh? Uh, well, not exactly, but I got the closest thing to it. <laughs> what did you get? A kangaroo. <laughs> a kangaroo? I knew it, I knew it, I knew oh, it. Oh, Remley, well, I told you to get a pony. Well, I didn't have any more left. I didn't want to disappoint Phyllis, so I got her a kangaroo. I got it out on the porch. I'll call Zelda in. Zelda? <laughs> yeah. Here's Zelda. Come on, Zelda. <laughs> oh, oh, no. Phil, help. Do something. It's jumping all over the place. Remley, get that Australian hop along out of here. <laughs> The guy said the only thing will calm her down is music. Well, we don't have any music. Then you sing to her, Curly. All right, anything to keep her quiet. Now sit down in the corner, Zelda. Sit down in the corner and listen. Listen. Now listen. <laughs> now, Uncle Phil's, he's going to sing. You lucky kangaroo, you.
Give me that old time religion, that old time religion. Give me that old time religion, cause it's good enough for me. It was good for Paul and Silas, it was good for Paul and Silas, it was good for Paul and Silas, and it's good enough for me. Show me that place by the river, that place by the river. Show me that place by the river on Jordan's sunny shore. What well, say Daniel from the lions? Say Daniel from the lions. What took Daniel with the lions? He can start in telling me. Well, it was that old time religion, yes, that old time religion, yes, that old-time religion, and it's good enough for me. It helped Daniel with the lions, it helped you set him free. Well, if it's good enough for Daniel, then it's good enough for me. So give me that old-time religion, give me that old-time religion, give me that old-time religion, it's good enough for me. Cause I'll be listening for Gabriel, I'll be listening for Gabriel, I'll be listening for Gabriel to blow on Judgment Day. What helped David with Goliath, help David with Goliath, what helped David slay Goliath? Was it set him free? Well, it was that old-time religion, yes, that old-time religion, that old-time religion, and it's good enough for me. It helped David with Goliath, it helped him set him free. And if it's good enough for David, then it's good enough for me. Give me that old-time religion, religion, old-time religion, that old-time religion, it's good enough for me. Now what rescued Brother Jonah, what rescued Brother Jonah? What was it saved old Jonah from the belly of the whale? Just that old-time religion, that old-time religion, just yes, that old-time religion, and it's good enough for me. It saved Jonah from the whale, yes, it helped to set him free. And if it's good enough for Joni, then it's good enough for me. So give me that old-time religion, that old-time religion, give me that old-time religion, it's good enough for me. Well, give me that old-time religion, that old-time religion, give me that old-time religion. Good enough for me. Give me that old time religion. That old time religion. Give me that old time religion. It's good enough for me. That did it, Curly. Zelda's quiet now. Your singing did something to her. Well, it figures. She's a female, ain't she? <laughs> oh, just look at her sitting there with her little pouch quivering. <laughs> and her front paws over her ears. <laughs> Don't be a critic, Zell. If there's one thing I can't stand, it's a wise kangaroo. Well, I'm not going to stay in the same house with that animal. I'm going upstairs and you fellas get rid of that beast right now All right, all right Now, come on, Remley Between the two of us, we can subdue her and get her out of the house right. Come here, Zelda <laughs> Look out, Curly, she's kicking again Zelda, stop forcing her, I mean kangarooing around <laughs> Hey, Remley, we'll have to shove her in that closet until we can get somebody to take her away Curly, she don't want to go Well, we got to put her in Well, we'll grab her and rush her in You grab one side and I'll grab the other You ready? Yeah, I'm One, two, three <laughs> Well, we got her in the closet Yeah, we got her in there But now tell me something Who are we going to get to take her out of this house? <laughs> I hadn't thought of that Who can we get that Anybody would... Anybody help? I brought the groceries <laughs> Curly <laughs> yeah, the trainer just came in with a basket on his head. Yeah, we'll get Julius to take her out. Yeah, but how? We'll tell him we got a dame for him in the closet. She wants to go out with him. Yeah, we'll. Miss Faye, I put the groceries. Hey, on. hiya, Julius. Are you home again? <laughs> Don't you ever wake? All right, kid. I got a right Why to be. Why don't you look for a job and stop sponging off your wife? I hope Zelda kicks his brains out <laughs> Julius, I'm gonna do you a big favor I'm gonna arrange a date for you With what? <laughs> With one of my girlfriends How'd you like that? That depends What does this anteater look like? <laughs> she doesn't look like an anteater No, but you're getting warm, kid <laughs> Julius, look, now, I don't blame you for being suspicious of Frankie's girlfriends, but this time, man, this is a pretty one, and if you don't believe me, you just take a look for yourself. Well, that's fair enough. Where is she? Right in this closet. You keep her in a closet? <laughs> yeah, Julius, because she's kind of shy and she doesn't like to be seen in the light. Yeah, but if you talk nice to her, maybe she'll come out. 
Her name is Zelda. Go on in. Tell her I sent you. Okay. Hey, it's kind of dark in here. <laughs> Zelda. <laughs> Where are you, Zelda? My name is Julius. <laughs> well, say something, Zelda. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, this Remley really gets him. <laughs> oh, Zelda, how would you like to go out with me tonight? <laughs> well, <laughs> can't you turn the lights on? I'd like to see what this dame looks like. Well, Julius, grab her by the arm and bring her out here. Okay. Come on, Zelda. I want to take you out, and then we'll go... Oh. <laughs> What's the matter, Julius? He kicked me in my little belly. <laughs> no dame can do that to me. Well, I don't blame you. Grab her and show her who's the boss. You said it. No dame's gonna make a monkey out of me. Come here, you. I'm gonna take you and... Now, wait a minute, Zelda. That's a rough day. You're bruising me. Let go of me. I want you to get your paws off of me before... Paws? <laughs> Quiet in there? <laughs> Where's boss happen? I don't know, but I can't bear to look. <laughs> well, I'll take a look. I'll turn the light on. Curly, Julius is gone. Gone. Zelda must have eaten him. <laughs> Isn't that awful? Yeah, poor Zelda will have heartburn all night. <laughs> you know, it's too bad Julius had to go before tasting had a call. <laughs> Julius, where are you? Zelda, put me in her pouch. Oh, <laughs> isn't that sweet? She thought he was one of her young. <laughs> What's the idea of trying to date me with a kangaroo? You don't think a girl would go out with you, do you? <laughs> hey, Curly, now we got Julius and the kangaroo going steady. What's our next step? Open the front door. Yeah. Hi ho, Zelda! Away! <laughs> Get excited, kid. A kangaroo's like a homeless pigeon. She'll go back to where she came from. Where did she come from? Australia. So long, son. Follow my eyes. Don't forget the right, kid. Folks, this is Phil, and I'd like to thank Bing Crosby for inviting me to his 10th annual Pro Amateur National Golf Tournament at Del Monte this year. And also thanks to my good friend, Maury Luxford, for pairing me with a great guy and a terrific golfer, Dutch Harrison. And thanks to Dutch, we won the Pro Amateur. And that was my biggest thrill next to seeing the 39,000 fans turn out for Bing's tournament. And Bing, as he always does, turned over the entire proceeds. And this year, $40,000 went, thanks to Bing, to the community chest for youth centers and polio work. Good night, and thanks again, Bing. Good night, champ. This program was produced and directed by Paul Phillips. Included in today's cast were Stan Freeberg, Sheldon Leonard, and Jerry Hausner. The part of Frankie Remley was played by Elliot Lewis, and Julius was played by Walter Tetler. Coming up, Hedda Hopper, then it's Theater Guild on NBC.